What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the overall market, what's going on with SPY right now, what the trends are showing and what's going on with the QQQs, you know, the futures and everything that you should be anticipating for the future as I give you guys my forecast going forward. Now before I break anything down, before I get into any more details, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner, don't take any of this as financial advice whatsoever and also if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. Not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole whole and the last things if you guys can please check out the weeble link down below and in the description you'll be signing for weeble the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks each worth up to two thousand dollars and the best part is any of these 12 free stocks can be a free tesla share a free amc share or a mix of all of them it's a limited time offer that ends tomorrow check it out before they run out with that out of the way let's get on with the video so Looking at SPY, this thing had another very crazy day, and I think the market is becoming very unpredictable and like super insane at this point. If we go back just a couple of days on the five minute on SPY, you will notice that, I mean, yesterday in itself with CPI coming out was crazy. We had this crazy crash into open, crazy rally to about this top right about here. Then what I had anticipated is looking at the particular candle, so on, on the daily on SPY, right, I was talking about this candle. The candle itself looked bullish, seeing like a big reversal like this. But I mentioned to you that this market is full of fake outs. The market is just crazy right now, all right? And the market makers are angry. They're fighting with the, the bears and the bulls at the same time. And they really do what they can to really play retail in this market. And they're doing a fantastic job at that. They're very good at making mar uh, money when doing that. So what's going on right now? Well. I mentioned that, all right, this candle looks bullish. Now, for us to break out and truly see a rally, we had to see SPY break and hold 370. If we broke and hold 370, if we were able to do that, we would have seen a nice push past, I would say, 373 and maybe even that uh, 380 mark. So SPY had the potential to do that. Now, look at how they played many people today. Right, let me zoom out of this for a second. What happened today? So we had a continuation, a bullish continuation of this rally. A lot of people became very bullish. They started loading up on calls. They got excited. This did play a role in driving the price up. What happens? They push us up above 270. I'm sorry, 370. People become excited. They think we're about to rally. And then all of a sudden, massive rejection and a crash all the way back to the 350s. That is insane. The last couple of days have been crazy. So what does this really look like going forward? Well, there are two things to really consider. We have midterm elections in a couple of weeks. The market has historically pushed up approaching them. But at the same time, that's not always guaranteed, especially given all the states in this market. Now, from a technical standpoint, if you look at it, in the most simple way possible, we are continuing to downtrend. We're just going down and down and down and down. It does not look very good. We have even struggled to come back to like 400, 380 alone. So I don't really see us getting that midterm rally this year. It looks more like we're just ready to collapse at this point and see SPY continue to downtrend. Now, if you look at the overall trend, at least this recent falling wedge that formed within this descending, uh, broadening wedge. So right here, you have this giant wedge that's descending and it's broadening as time goes on. This means that the longer it takes for this thing to actually crash, the worse the drop is going to be, in my opinion. So with the Fed being very hawkish and the next FOMC meeting coming up in a couple of weeks, it's still not looking the best right now. I mean, the last CPI report came out, guys. It wasn't good whatsoever. It was still showing that inflation is high. And what happens to inflation is there's a good chance it peaked already, but that doesn't mean it's just going to start coming down immediately. It has a tendency of just hanging out at a very high rate. So for SPY, what am I anticipating? Well, you could see in this falling wedge, we keep on getting these touches. We're continuing to come down. So in that point right over there, it looks like we're going to continue to see more bearish price action. This thing is going to actually retest the lower values. Now, there could be another fake out on Monday where they push this back to like 370, try to get people excited. Then they give us another major rejection. It may not even follow this trend perfectly. So be very careful about that. In order for us to get a big rally, we have to get a clean break above 370 and hold that. 
So far, it's not looking like that. Seeing this candle right here looks very bearish. And if we come down, right now we're, we're actually testing previous support zones. So the key zone to watch for would be that 357 level. A break below that, then we have to try to hold 356. If we don't hold 356, 356.5, 3 uh, this thing has the potential to drop all the way down to 350. And that could actually happen next week. It looks like it's going to happen next week, given this trend. But once again, I don't want to make like a very objective prediction yet because we don't truly know what the market maker is going to play this time because they are they're crazy guys they're doing a, a brilliant job of tricking people but if we look at historical data let me see if i could kind of zoom into this uh, i don't know if i can give me one second guys there we go all right so anyways if you look at some historical data the S&P 500 midterm election year seasonal pattern since 1946. This is another pattern. And you can also break these down depending on the party and things like that. Looking at the red one. In fact, if you look at the trend overall, we are resembling this red one very, very closely. Notice how in March, all right, we had that rally. Did the rally continue into April? A little bit different this year. But then we did have that big drop that happened very recently all right we had that big drop that happened back like around that june time then we get a slight rally then right here look at the red one you guys can see the red one we had a nice push up in august followed by a big drop in september crash in september then october comes we get a slight rally just like how if you look at the charts in october we actually got a small push up back to about 380 and then after that another big rejection followed by a new low to be made in October. What did the SPY do? We made a new low already. Remember, we hit 356. We touched 348 recently. So the new low already came. Now, we may see another new low very soon. It doesn't look like the market's just ready to you know, reverse just yet. The bear market may continue for a while. In fact, we could remain sideways for a couple of months as well. We may not just fully recover as the end of the year comes we could get a slight rally near the end of the year but i'm not seeing a straight up recovery just yet because it really depends on the fed inflation and the pivot so that's what we have to really watch for so looking at this right now still looks bearish guys i wouldn't be surprised if spy actually retests 350 going to next week it would be the most likely possibility but it also depends on the tricks these market makers and institutions are playing if you look at the qqqs real quick i mean the whole market is moving like super collectively the QQQ is very similar setup. Nice push, nice rally. It looked like it wanted to go for that 275 gap fill. I think the gap is around there. Or it wanted to break above 275 to get the fill around 280. So it looked like it was going for it, right? And then huge rejection again, coming down pretty quickly. I'm, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually retest uh, uh, 260 very soon. Very, very likely as well. Looking at something else like the NASDAQ. Very similar setup. It's almost the same. You guys are, could already see it's looking pretty bearish. And the whole market is just following the similar trend. Very interesting to see AMC in the green, though. Uh, Tesla, not looking too good either. We're back in this very low range right here. So I would be very careful to see if this could actually continue. Now, like I said, um, I mean, the market still looks more bearish. Tesla looks like it could retest 200 very soon. The tricks of these market makers are just crazy. So please be ready. So that's essentially what I have. I went over Tesla, the QQQs, the NASDAQ, and SPY. For the VIX, what I'm noticing is, hold on, let me fix this. I don't know what just happened. Let me look at the weekly. There we are. So what you'll notice is every crash sees a VIX at 45. It's happened every single time the market crashed. We're not even close to that yet. So the market looks still very bearish, guys, to be as honest as possible. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see more downside next week right? Very likely, but I'm not just fixated on like us crashing, crashing, crashing. I know there's going to be more manipulation and you have to be ready for it. So watch your levels carefully. I'll make another video on Monday to kind of like give you guys more updates. Please enjoy the weekend. I'm actually going to take some time off from trading and like researching stocks and stuff over this weekend. I just need a break from all this madness, to be honest. And I re really recommend doing the same thing for everyone else. Anyways, thank you for listening. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one. The market's still going to the moon for the long term as the recovery will still come, guys. I'm still very bullish long term. And peace out.